We talk a lot about herbs and supplements, but we never actually really have a serious talk about when to stop taking them. Do you know if you still need to be taking that thing that you picked up a couple months ago or a couple years ago that's still in your cupboard? So let's talk about when and why to stop taking different supplements. All right, let's dive in. First question we need to ask ourselves is what the heck was the purpose of this supplement? Is it something that's seasonal, say taking a higher dose of vitamin D in the winter time? Is it something that's meant to act as an aid, say you're taking something for insomnia? Or are we replacing a nutrient that you're not getting out of your diet? These are all really important questions to ask because it's going to affect the duration or how long you stay on these. So let's break this down into a couple of categories. Let's say we're taking extra B12 because we have a nutrient deficiency. Now, let's say if you're a vegetarian, probably going to be a supplement that you keep pretty much forever as long as you maintain that type of diet. However, if you've done some sort of functional testing first to understand your nutrient breakdown or nutrient deficiencies, hopefully you're working with someone or you're working with a coach or a nutritionist to help you change your diet so that you are able to address those naturally. And as you're doing that, you may need to have that extra B12 in the beginning, but the goal would be to eventually bring you off of that supplement. At least that's usually my approach. And so how do you know when it's time to come off? Well, usually we will retest and we'll take a look. Have the interventions that we've been doing, has the diet and lifestyle changes actually brought that number up to where you don't need that additional supplement? So test and don't guess is a great way to actually know do I need to stop taking this or can I come off of it? Now let's take the example we're using it as a treatment. Let's say we're looking to work with your cholesterol and bring your cholesterol down naturally. Again, we're probably doing a lot of dietary and lifestyle interventions. We're working with your diet. We're working with your exercise, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe I've recommended something like berberine because your lipids are pretty high and berberine is great at helping to reduce uh, LDL and other t and cholesterol. But if you saw my video about berberine, you might also know that berberine can help to kill off any type of bad bacteria. So we don't necessarily want to be on it for forever. So how will we know it's time to come off? Well, hopefully we'll test your cholesterol and your lipids again, right? So again, the approach of tests and don't guess, in my opinion, really the way to go. And again, I'll mention that this is why I think it's so important to really work with a practitioner or a provider or a coach or somebody who knows how to use these different herbs and supplements effectively, when to use them and for how long to use them. Because again, I'll say just because things are available over the counter or they're all natural or they're an herb doesn't mean that it's necessarily safe for you to be on long term and doesn't always mean that it's the right thing for you. Now, let's take another category of herbs and supplements. And these are what I call short term or kind of high dose herbs or ones that can potentially uh, alter liver enzymes or work on the similar pathways as other drugs you may be taking concurrently. Now, these are definitely ones where you're generally gonna be on for shorter periods of time. You may cycle on or cycle off, or they may just use them as necessary, kind of in the moment as a spot treatment. Uh, example of this that comes to mind is the herb kava, um, often used for anxiety and mood, but it can be one of those herbs if used long-term can also increase liver enzymes. So this would be, again, a thing that I would be testing to make sure that, you know, liver enzymes are on track and in a safe level. But at the same time, it's not an herb that you would be on for long term. So again, knowing the pros and cons of using specific supplements and herbs is going to play a huge role in when you stop taking, taking them or when you cycle off of them. Another great example or category of this are adaptogens. Now, I love adaptogens. They're, I use them quite often. They're great with dealing with brain fog, with stress, fatigue, anxiety, kind of all the things that I generally work with with my clients. But the question really is like, well, how do I know when I'm cured? Like, how do I know when I can back off of this? And I think this is a great question because I generally will say, all right, we've again done all the dietary, the nutrition, the lifestyle, we work with exercise, we work with mindset, we troubleshooted your sleep, et cetera, et cetera. We've balanced your hormones, we've healed the gut. Hopefully now my goal will be that we can now start to cycle off of the adaptogens. Again, generally never my goal to have you on a supplement or an herb for forever, unless there's some sort of, again, you know, dietary restriction or underlying condition that would make that necessary. So generally when clients are starting to feel better, things are feeling good, 
then we start to taper off. We start to pull back on those herbs and supplements. And the goal would be that you're actually maintaining that same state of feeling really good so that you don't need them anymore. So a recommendation I often say is, hey, when you are in a good place, let's think about cycling off or tapering off and see if we can take this out. That way you save a little bit of money and you don't need to be swallowing a lot of pills all day. So there may be something that you've prescribed for yourself. You saw it in the store, you picked it up, you thought, hey, you know, I watched the YouTube video about this. Let's say rhodiola. And you've been taking it for a while and you're not even sure if it works. Well, taking a break and tapering off of it and seeing how you feel could tell you a whole lot about whether or not you still need to be taking that supplement. And another reason to stop taking or cycling off of your herbs and supplement is if you have some sort of testing coming up, make sure that before you do any blood work or any type of uh, testing that you talk with your practitioner because some herbs and supplements can actually give you false positives or false negative to certain type of tests. Or maybe you're going through a detox phase, in which case you might want to stop some of your herbs and supplements to help facilitate the detoxification process. So again, the idea here is that we don't wanna be on herbs and supplements for forever, generally speaking. While you're on the herb or supplement, make sure that you're doing all the necessary dietary and other lifestyle changes that are working to hopefully correct the underlying issue. Again, herbs and supplements are very powerful tools, but they need to be treated with respect and you need to know where the limits are and when you should stop these types of things. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. Or if you'd like to know more about how to work with me, I have two options down below. You can join my coaching program, The Better Health Blueprint, if you need intense or in-depth help. Or if you just like a one-off virtual consult where I can give you some suggestions and recommendations, then you can click on the other link down below for a virtual consult. All right, I hope that this was helpful and I will see you in the next video. Bye.